Happy New Year, everyone! Yeah, I know it's been three months since I haven't uploaded. You, you shut, shut the, the fuck. Valve is one of the most influential gaming companies of all time. With the creation of Steam, not only did they give indie developers a solid platform to sell their games, but it saved PC gaming as a whole, proving that it has the same amount of worth as a console. And in addition to their amazing platform, they have created some of the most revolutionary games of all time. Counter-Strike, Portal, Team Fortress 2, and so much more. However, let's go a little back, 25 years to be exact, in 1998 to witness their first game. Half-Life Half-Life is one of the greatest games of all time. It was the game to truly define what a 3D first-person shooter should be and set many aspects surrounding it. Aspects still being used by modern first-person shooters. It stood the test of time and is still constantly being replayed by thousands of people. So, I decided today to try Half-Life, so that I can see by myself why this game is adored by millions and try to consider myself a true gamer. So, get cozy, grab a drink and a snack and let's begin. So, we start the game and... Uh, the game starts in a monorail section as we travel through the Black Mesa research facility and I'm gonna be honest, I do not like the intro at all! It just feels too long and unnecessary. I get why people were impressed by it back in 98, but I was born in 2 God damn it! if I'm watching something and there isn't Subway Surfers gameplay with Family Guy clips at the top with pop-up text, then I'm not interested! I mean, it is nice. It shows us stuff that's important to the story, but the segment after that kinda already does that, so wasting almost 5 minutes of my life on this, I am pissed! Even if it was just 20 seconds, that'd be too long. Do you know what can happen in 20 seconds? So the one thing that this does well is show the game's amazing environment and aesthetic. Look, this game is ugly, there's no denying that, but it still looks incredibly good, if you see what I mean. An example that looks ugly and bad is pretty much any 3D game in the mid to end 2000, that, that yellow tint. That shit will never look okay. What I mean is that while I can count the poly count on my fingers and the textures look really fucking pixelated, it still has an insane an amount of charm. The environments look amazing and you really feel immersed in the fact that you're in an American research facility. The models all make sense for the context of the story. Most of them? The dialogues, while they use one of the worst mics of all time, is very natural. The lightning... well, it's good in my recording, but I'm not playing the original version. More on that in a bit. And the music... oh, 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 oh. Oh, the music is amazing in this game. Out of all Valve games, it's not my favorite. I still prefer the tracks for CS2 and TF2 a little bit more. But in the grand scheme of things, this track is great. If you could listen to it! This is a problem with game running on the Source engine. It's not powerful enough to handle a massive map like this one. So instead, it separates this big map into smaller ones and loads them one by one when entering them to keep everything running smoothly. Now, it can lead to some bullshit loading like this, for example. 
Oh my god. Wow! But for the most part, it's done pretty well. But sadly, and I don't know why, whenever you load a new area and you have music running, yeah, that shit's gone. It really fucking annoys me! There it is. The armor. Welcome to the AG field. Hello. Protective system for use in hazardous environments. Yo, hold on. This music goes hard. It's ridiculous time. Contaminant sensors activated. Well, right on through, sir. Looks like you're in barrel. Oh, I like the music, man. <laughs> the only thing that didn't age too well are probably the sound effects. Obviously, the quality is bad, but they mostly feel super exaggerated. But honestly, if anything, it makes it funnier in my opinion. And hey, they still use some of the sounds in their titles, so, you know, I guess people didn't think they were that bad. When he just walks, it sounds like he's playing on a fucking basketball court. Have you been able to get the beverage machine to work yet? I don't think so. Anyhow, oh my god, this is still running. Well, I guess we can use this opportunity to leave us to our own thoughts and come up with the dumbest metaphor of all time. Uh, is it just me or does... Gordon Freeman kind of looks like Walter White. Like, it can't just be me, right? This game has existed for over 20 years. There has got to be someone else who made that comparison, right? Right? <laughs> I sure hope this is not going to be a running joke in this video. Alright, we can finally leave the monorail. We're playing as Gordon Freeman, a highly trained professional with a PhD in theoretical physics, positioned as a research associate at the Black Mesa Research Facility. Oh my god, I don't fucking care! And people immediately want to have a conversation with us, but I am not hearing all of that, so we immediately take our HEV suit and bunny hop our way through the research facility. Jesse, we must stop the resonance cascade, Jesse. Now let's go over the story real quick, and I promise it won't be boring. A mysterious alien artifact had been recovered from New Mexico. See, I told you there was a connection. And was brought to the top secret Black Mesa facility for research purposes. The plan was to use this artifact to try and improve the current knowledge we had on teleportation technology. Now, does it go right? Mr. Y, can I get some indication about what we're doing? Jesse, it's fine, really. You, you'll be good. Mr. White, what the hell is this, yo? Yo, Mr. Y Get away from the feet. Shutting down. No. Yo, you Mr. White, what is going on, yo? Jesse, it's fine, really. Everything goes fine. Mr. White, get me out of here! Jesse, just shut the fuck up. Mr. What? Okay, maybe it didn't go so good. Oh, you think so? So, after we opened a rift in the space continuum, letting thousands if not millions of aliens go through, what's our first instinct? Living this place as fast as possible. Now in Half-Life, we do a lot of running. I mean, we probably traverse Black Mesa in its entirety. And this place is massive, probably like the size of a small town. So that's why I really don't understand why we are carrying 14 weapons. Like, damn bro, how is he running so fast? At some point you gotta be over encumbered, right? For the weapons, we have a magnum that hits harder than an 8 gauge, totally makes sense. This weird alien shooting thing. Okay. Guys, hear me out. A crossbow, because of course, when you have someone with a firearm and full body armor running at you, using a weapon from the medieval age is the best option. A fucking death laser that can delete anything out of existence. An RPG, and you'd think this is good, but it's not one shot marine, so what's even the point? An MP5. 
we were grenade launcher built into it once again on these new necessities. And finally, wherever the fuck this is. All right, hear me out. In total, you have two pistols, three anti-personal weapons, four heavy weapons, four more disposable weapons, and the famous crowbar. Honestly, the guns work very well, they feel good to use, and it's pretty easy to learn, at least for me. And some weapons will get less use than others, I mean, we can probably finish the game with just an MP5. But honestly, they complement each other pretty well, and they mostly don't feel useless. Mostly. As for the hog that will display the info, it's honestly very understandable, I don't think I would have changed anything if I could. The one small thing that pisses me off is how you have to choose the weapons. Instead of just pressing a button on your keyboard assigned to each weapon, you have to scroll to the weapon you want to pick, then press M1 to pick it. Why? I mean, I get it, there's not enough buttons here to pull all of the weapons, but why the mouse click? You do get used to it at some point, but it makes quick swapping so slow and it actively pisses me off. And you know what? I don't know how to transition from this segment to the next one, so I'm just gonna put a Breaking Bad meme here. James, we need to steal the heavy update. Moving on from that, after crawling through way too many sewers, committing genocide and dealing property damage, we finally arrive at the surface. The military is waiting for us and they were supposed to get us out of here. Keyword. Supposed. Yeah, instead of saving us, the government sent the army to kill all the people involved in the resonance cascade, including you, of course, in an attempt to try and cover up the accident. This is the worst solution of all time. I understand why we're doing this, you want to avoid people hearing about this and freaking out about the fact that there are literally aliens on Earth, but killing hundreds of people will probably raise a lot of questions. So obviously, I start running back in the base because one man can take on the entire army of the United States of fucking America. And during your run, what do you fall on? An intergalactical octopus, of course. Now. Dealing with a giant alien is something that's tricky. You gotta take it slow and not rush things. So, grab your otherworldly monster extermination guides and follow the steps very carefully. Step 1 Burn it with fire. Okay, fine, it's a little more complicated than that. You first need to get the necessities for launching the rocket, fuel, oxygen, and power, which requires a little bit of parkour. And that transitions us perfectly into my favorite part, movement and puzzles. Listen, I'm a bit of a movement connoisseur. One of my first video games was Sonic Adventure DX for PC. I love this game. It's so good and made me the Sonic fan that I am today. The movement, the gameplay, the story, the music. Ugh. One of the only games that I had with my Wii U was Platoon. And I fell in love with the franchise and its fast paced movement. I sunk so much time into the games. Too much time, maybe. And my favorite classes in TF2 are Scout and Soldier. I was set up to like moving quickly in games. Oh, and by the way, I swear to God, if I see someone typing a comment like only 40 hours on Scout, well, I. I have 12,000! I'm better than you! Good for you, man. But you don't have a life. There is your reward for being a loser. And Half Life. Wow, oh boy. Half Life controls beautifully. To be fair, if you're playing a sword game, the movement is easy to understand straight to the point, but incredibly hard to master. B hopping, air strafing. Rocket jumps, they feel so clean to pull off, it actually requires skill to master it, and it rewards you for it. Which makes it better than literally any other game engine in the universe. And the amazing thing is that it works the exact same for all Source games. 
So if you know one, you'll know all of them. As for the portals, it's not Dora the Explorer levels of Arbius, but to me, it feels more like a test of observation than anything else. I mean, look at this one, for example. You have to pull this grate to stop the wall from going down to shoot a laser to open this wall. I got it on my first try, it's really not that hard. I'm not relegating it to big tasks because it's pretty fun to do them. But I'm really gonna be taking more than 10 minutes to finish one. Okay, back to the story. So, after committing arson, we jumped down the hole where our victim was living in, crawled through more sewers. Jesus, why do we crawl through so many sewers? And we make our way to this giant room where- Okay, seriously, another one? Yeah, it's something that you should expect out of Half-Life. You get zero breaks. So the game just keeps rolling. And to be fair, when it's the apocalypse, I doubt that you'll go from the sky on fire and everything burning down to a beautiful blue sky for 5 minutes until everything goes back to normal again. But Jesus Christ, this game is ruthless! You just finish a fight, almost losing all of your health, and the game is like, great! Here's another one, bitch! We got a guy step one of our guide to this monster. I mean, he literally uses a flamethrower. Therefore, if he uses fire, he's fire resistant, obviously. So, flip to the next page, would you please? Step two. Blazer! Well, really, here, killing the monster was not the goal. We had to restore the power so that we could get this old train running again, which leads us to. Oh god, please, no, not on the rail, anything but on the rail. I don't like the on a train chapter. There are some cool ideas for in there, but it's slow, boring, suffers from hallway syndrome, and feels like it's just there to make the game longer. I mean, you can run faster than the train at top speed. Speed for crying out loud! I fucking hate this chapter, so I'll just snap my fingers and move on to something more bearable. Okay, so we are back at the surface. See, our goal was to launch a missile that could reverse the effects of the resonance cascade. So, we kill more marines, get to the base, launch the rocket, and flashbang ourselves in the process. Oh god, my fucking eye! So, we're pretty far into the video now, so I gotta address something. Most of you are probably just watching, enjoying the video, and wondering why the hell I'm making a segue. But <laughs> I just know that there is one guy typing a 5000 word thesis in my comment to roast me. So let's just get this out of the way. I'm not playing Half-Life, I'm playing the source port. Oh, what? Yeah, I know, this, this oh, is disgusting. See, Half-Life was made on the Golden Source engine, which is just a heavily modified version of the Quake engine. And they managed to squeeze a lot out of it. But it's still an incredibly weak engine, so a port could only benefit it. And to be fair, there was some promise. The lightning is not perfect, but definitely a good upgrade. The flashlight is an actual flashlight and not just a white square that flashed where you point your cursor. Like seriously, what the fuck is this? And other small improvements like body not being solid the second they die, making some sewers more bearable. So overall, it should be the best version. However, this port has way too many problems, mostly being the overabundance of bugs and Look, this is a warning for all people with epilepsy problem. There's about to be bright flashing lights, so skip to this type temp. Okay, we cool. Alright, 3, 2, 1. Trying to use is that bad? What the fuck? What is going on? <laughs> yeah, no. No, I'm sure this is not meant to happen. I'm sure this is not meant to happen. What? Whether it's the lightning going absolutely crazy, the skybox glitching out, or the scientists having a fucking aneurysm, this is not the most stable version so of Half-Life. No! Ah, 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 no! Ah, ah, stop! Stop! No! 
Shut the f now, me personally, I find it to be funner, if anything. Hmm. Ah. Yes. Just. Uh, this is just how you're meant to sit on a chair. But those are big glitches, and for something that is supposed to be the definitive way to play the game, that's not possible. Oh, but Skyro, Valve is a company that's busy. They feel alone. They call a lot of their shoulders, and they don't want to manage a 19-year-old game. N Valve is valued at 10 billion dollars, and that's more than 360 employees. They could take a couple of people to fix the game in an afternoon, and they'd be done. But oh no, keep them in the Counter Strike department. That just makes sense. <laughs> Okay, okay, where, where was I? Huh? Oh yeah, where it? And before anybody asked me, oh, but Skyro, why didn't you just play the original version? I picked up Source when it was on promo for like 70 cents. What I wanted to buy the original, it was 8 bucks. I didn't have the money to afford it. There, we can move on. Jesse, we need money for the summer sale! So now our task is to go to the Lambda complex, where most of the scientists is and get them the hell out of here. We go through a base, submerge in water, go through an anchor, fight black ops units that have a more than questionable design, ah! keep on going, and... Yo, who turned off the lights? I'ma have to dig you down! Yeah, you get captured by marines, lose all of your weapons, and get thrown into a garbage compactor. But because we're just that guy, we get out of here, pick up a crowbar, and make our way through the industrial complex. Now, honestly, I really like the shift of pace, going from an absolute menace to basically having nothing is quite refreshing if I do say so myself. Anyhow, we're into another part of the research facility, and it's only now that I realize that this place is fucking massive. Like seriously, how the hell are they financing this? We kill more marines, solve some puzzles, same soft scientists, keep on going for a day, you, you know the routine at this point. Yes, Gustav Fring is coming for us! And we're back at the surface. Again. And the army has gone full force. They don't just want you captured, they want you dead. But sadly, unlike them, I can respond, so who cares? <laughs> we jump down the dam, open a passageway, and... Shit. We turn off those fans, open a passageway, and then we can escape. Then we have to traverse those mountains and open a secret passage, all while having to deal with the helicopter and mines. <laughs> then we get to this ravine, and... There it is! There's the music! Oh yeah, there's another thing that I forgot to complain about, and it's the fact that you run way too fast in this world. <laughs> now at first, I thought it was cool to run faster, finish the game faster. But then you get to the platforming sections, and I just wanna kill myself! The jumps can require a pretty high level of precision, but when you take into consideration the fact that you can send flying when you just slightly tap your keyboard, you end up with stuff like this. This. Oh, nigga! Ah! Or even this. <laughs> anyway, we get past the ravine. Skip, skip, skip. Boing, boing, boing. Jesus, I still haven't healed up yet. Now that I think about it, the way that you heal probably deserves its old segment because of how much it pisses me off. In most shooters, healing is in pretty small quantities, so the game rather wants you to dodge the damage. However, in Half-Life, there are many more ways to heal up, and in combination with the level design, the game rather wants you to tank the damage so you can recover. Now, the game was built around it, cool, it's very creative, cool, and it's executed correctly, cool, and the amount of healing you get, Cool, I don't like this system. I can definitely appreciate it. It's pretty fun sometimes to explore and find healing. But other times, the game just refuses to give healing for an extended period of time. Which can make it so frustrating. So if you find yourself taking too much damage in a confrontation, 
you might as well just reload yourself five and try again because if you just go into the next segment with such little health you're gonna get trailed over and over and over again. Okay, so more skipping, this part is boring, keep adventuring until we finally get in this building and Jesus Christ you gotta be kidding. This is bad! This is very Stay very bad! bad. Run the hell away from this thing, use those launch pads to get to the tactical map and then OBS stopped recording because I didn't have enough space on my hard drive and I lost an hour and 30 minutes of recording. <laughs> so let me recap real quick. Basically, this tactical map allows us to select a place to launch an airstrike. We took you 1945 the monster pass, blow up these walls and antennas, and access an underground base. And we're back for a new chapter. The military starts to back out the base because they realize that wasting all of the government budget and sending thousands of men to die just for one dude is not the smartest thing ever. A couple of murders later and finally we're at the land complex. Only took us 6 chapters. Now remember the rocket that we launched earlier? Well apparently that did nothing to stop the reference cascade because some random ass creature is keeping the border open. So, a creature keeping the whole thing open, you know what that means? Time for genocide! After activating the portal, we end up in Zen, the alien's homeworld, and I'ma keep it 100, it's not my favorite part of the game by a long shot. And on the way exists, so being worse than that, you should be you should be proud of yourself. The game needs you to adventure in a more organic environment, something much more natural. And it's a good idea. On paper, the problem is how they had to execute it. As I said before, Half-Life was made with a golden source engine. And this engine is not capable at all to create realistic terrain. So to Somewhat simulated, they use floors and wall to create this terrain. And does it work? <laughs> no! Movement feels so wonky in this area. Sometimes I'd be trying to crawl up a rock and it just doesn't work. It didn't work in the original and obviously it doesn't work in the source port. At that point, I don't expect this bullshit port to get something right. Really, the only one that got it to function properly is Black Mesa. But I'm not talking about this one, at least today. But at least, I will say, the long jump model is really fun. Too bad it's given this late in the game. Oh, oh yeah, also the environment is cool, but I don't know, the interiors of some of these buildings feel way too colorful. And it can be a little confusing to know where you have to go, but it's probably just a me thing. I'm sure a lot of people are completely fine with it. Just dance, we need to- He did the same joke about three times already. I don't think it's funny anymore. Moving on from that, we fight the gunner, the mother of all head traps. This, this is one of the most intense boss fights, requiring extreme precision and quick reaction time. I bit it in like three tries. Are you fucking kidding me? For what is supposed to be one of the strongest creatures in the entire universe, this is pathetically easy. I mean, this fight isn't too bad, it just feels like it requires more spam than anything really. And while it's fine, it's not really my thing. Yes, how the fuck does this keyboard work? Anyhow, after it fucking explodes, and it got me to do a rerun because I was in this explosion in one of them. Are you serious right now, bro? We keep it rolling. We explore an alien camp where we see that the Vulcan slaves, those guys, are created here. You know, me, me personally, personally I'd, I've grown at the entire facility, but shit, whatever, I guess. More exploring, more murdering, until finally, after all of what we've done, we reach the nest of the Nihilans and JESUS CHRIST THIS BOY UGLY 
My God, what the fuck is this? What the hell is this? This be looking like Jimmy Neutron. This n so ugly, his birth certificate is probably just an apology. This n be looking like a fucking ghast. When that n came out of mama, the doctor probably gave her a Will Smith type of slap. Okay, sorry, yo, I just had to get this out of the way. Now the fight itself is relatively straightforward. You have to destroy these crystals. To make it a little easier, you can use those launch pads that will send you to the fucking stratosphere. Once they're destroyed, the monster will open his head to show his weak point. And seriously, if you can't figure this out, you're just dumb as shit. Of course, Nyland won't be sitting here, arms crossed, doing jack shit, and will do various things. Attack you with those purple energy balls. I am dying more times to these things that I'd like to admit. Sure, a portal that sends you to another room where there are enemies you have to fight, as well as some ammo, and uh, yeah, that's about it. And somehow, despite the pathetically low amount of moves he can perform, and probably being the most obvious fight ever. It took me 40 minutes to finish this, and how is that even possible? Now this recording was starting to get pretty long, and this video is getting pretty long too, so I decided to do the only logical thing in this situation to save myself a little bit of time. Cheat. It's literally just using a cell file to reload further in the fight so I don't have to do everything from scratch all over again, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel guilty doing this. But after a lot of tries, dumbass deaths, and probably losing my sanity, Seriously, another explosion? This is the first time this day! 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 Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Dumb tree dash 2.2 is out. Wait, what? <laughs> So, we're getting close to the end of the game, and I thought it would be nice that I gave my general opinion on it. Listen, it might look like I hate this game because of how much I've been dunking on it, but I only do this because it's funnier and complaining is practically part of my DNA, I'm only human after all. In reality, I love this game. Some parts haven't aged too well, mostly the visuals, but for the most part, it's an amazing game. The gameplay is amazing, the OST rocks, the story is simple but incredible. This is a must play. And I'm definitely gonna play Half-Life 2 soon after that. Of course, don't be fucking stupid like I was and buy the original version. It's only $8 and you can go for stupidly low prices during summer and winter sales. I promise. It's worth every single penny. So overall, Half-Life is a 9 out of 10. Would definitely play again. Okay, okay, so 
this is the outro of the game. We finally meet up with this mysterious man that we see multiple times a game. His name is... Uh... The G-Man. The G-Man. It's the G- The, the G-Man saw our work during the entire game and is very impressed with what we've accomplished. And while taking us around, that's when I realized that you do not want to like me if it's an apocalypse. Am I a war criminal? Well, the G-Man decides to offer us a job. It has no vacations, no weekends, you won't be able to see your family until they feel like it, and it doesn't get paid. And I know what you're thinking already. <laughs> Who the hell would take such an horrendous job? Well, see, you can deny it. But if you do, you'll be put in a fight where you'll be raped so hard your ass will be sent to another multiverse. So, ultimately, we accept the offer to work for them. Jump through the portal and... Wait, the credits are rolling? No, 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 hold on, that can't be it, right? There's gotta be something else. Uh, uh, just let me check my notes real quick. The fuck do you mean by that thing? <laughs>